Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow, your smart buildings podcast. My name is John Lester and in today's episode, we are doing a buzzword buster about cyber security. Now, a buzzword buster in this episode, we spend a little bit of time talking about those industry terms, uh, some of the, the words or the acronyms that you hear in the industry about these specific topics to try and make it a little bit easier for you to understand what's going on and what are people talking about in these topics. And as I mentioned, today is all about cyber security. And I'm joined by Alina Matthewhina. She is the Cybersecurity Manager of Building Automation at Siemens uh, Building Products. Uh, Alina, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting. I'm very happy to be in this podcast and speak more about my favorite topic, cybersecurity. <laughs> And we're very, very happy to have you. We've we've had uh, several conversations in the past uh, on different cybersecurity topics, a lot about BACnet Secure Connect. So thank you again for, for giving us your time and expertise to do this buzz, buzzword buster. And uh, if there is ever a topic that is just loaded with buzzwords, it's cybersecurity. Right? There are so many different things you know, from different types of, of cybersecurity attacks right through to more industry-specific topics that uh, it's almost impossible to keep keep ahead of. So thank you so much for joining us. We're going to focus a little bit more, let's say, in our, our building industry, let's call it, um, initially. Uh, but I could also imagine this is not the last time we talk about buzzwords when it, it comes to cybersecurity. Now, Alina, are you ready? Yes. Okay. I'm always ready. <laughs> because we have a list of, of buzzwords that we put together um, and there's a lot there. And we're going to we're going to keep your brain your brain running, you keep your the ideas flowing for this one. So it's going to be quick fire, and we'll keep you busy. Um, let's dive straight in. The, the first buzzword or, or first buzz phrase that we have for cybersecurity is defense in depth. What does defense in depth mean? So this is, uh, I would say, a very um, common uh, cybersecurity concept, uh, and you will uh, see, I would say, it's a best practice for the industry. So the goal is uh, to build uh, multiple layers of cybersecurity. And uh, in case of, uh, let's say, cyber attack, uh, if there is uh, one mechanism which is uh, doesn't work or fail or uh, interrupt it, uh, there is always in place uh, other other cybersecurity uh, layers, uh, cybersecurity mechanisms which uh, can uh, provide adequate level of cybersecurity. For example, in our building automation, we are saying that uh, um, we need to protect everything from operational level uh, to field level, uh, from uh, physical access control uh, to network uh, uh, protection, uh, and. Uh, Defense in depth only will work if this protection will work simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So it's it's having multiple different systems, multiple approaches to give you the best chance to, to remain secure. Mm -hmm. And if someone bypasses or is able to get past the first level, the second level is there to help protect you and so on. Exactly. Okay, perfect. I like it. It's it's almost like, uh, you know, the castles in the Middle Evil. If you got through the, the first wall of defense, the second wall is there to back up. So... I think this makes sense to me. I like it. Uh, the next one is separation of duties. Mm -hmm. So separation of duties, uh, I would say you will see this buzzword in access management, access controls. Mm -hmm. um, it means uh, that um, we need uh, to... Uh, don't have, uh, don't put a lot of power to one individual. For example, uh, software developers, they don't need to have access to, let's say, production data and systems. And another example would be uh, access rights of uh, system management, um, system administrator have to be uh, separated from, for example, access rights of uh, database administrator. Because in case of cyber attack, uh, uh, if uh, a user or or account is compromised, there is uh, no um, n n there is uh, uh, no impact to another account or service. Okay, so it's not putting all the eggs in one basket, uh, <laughs> ensuring that uh, you know if if we do have a compromised situation with one particular user or one particular account, it doesn't open the door to absolutely everything. Yeah, that's true. 
Perfect. I like it. Uh, I think we're going a little bit in the same direction when we talk about least privilege principle. What's the least privilege principle? Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, least privilege, uh, I would say it's also um, you will see in access management, but it's a little bit different uh, from separated of duties uh, principle uh, because um, uh, for example, if you have a service uh, or uh, account or user, uh, they need uh, a bare minimum of privileges uh, to uh, to make uh, done a certain task. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, um, if there is a service running on the system and it has uh, user root privileges, it means that it can actually, you can access everything on the device and you can manipulate everything on the device. And in mm -hmm. case of cyber attack, if uh, there are a lot of processes they're running with the root privilege, cyber uh, like hacker can take down the whole system. So that's why we are saying in building automation that uh, uh, all systems, they uh, all services, uh, all applications you have uh, on the device, they should really run with the least privileges. Thank you. So making sure that, again, it, rather than a user, if a device or something like this is, is then breached, it, you still have only a certain amount of access, a certain ability exactly. to make make changes within the system. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I think some of these things go together, but the next buzzword we have is hardening, so or yeah. cybersecurity hardening. Mm -hmm. uh, hardening. Uh, so you will see this term, I would say, um, in documentation. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, manufacturers uh, they are. Um, uh, publishing cybersecurity hardening guidelines. Mm -hmm. So these uh, guidelines, uh, they provide uh, configuration uh, information of the products. For example, uh, how they should be installed uh, in the um, in the project, uh, what kind of uh, services have to be disabled or enabled, uh, uh, what kind uh, of, uh, for example, firewall rules you need uh, to also configure in your project and so on. So this is a kind of standard information which you need uh, to provide uh, secure commissioning and also secure operation of the product and system. Okay, perfect. So guidance for anyone who's actually put deploying a system, guidance okay. who's taking a product and putting it into situ uh, of what they should do or the, the the minimum or the level of expectation of some of the actions they should take to give you the best chance to be successful, to, exactly. to, to make it as secure as or part of a, a secure approach. Okay. Um, I almost said the next buzzword just then in the last sentence. Um, uh, this cybersecurity approach, we talk about a holistic approach. What is a holistic cybersecurity approach? So a lot of companies, they are applying this holistic approach to security, uh, which means they are concentrated on four basic factors uh, uh, to improve security in the organization. So these four factors, they are, it's a people, uh, communication, processes, and technologies. Mm -hmm. So people, they have to be uh, um, educated on cybersecurity. They should have a broad uh, awareness about possible cyber threats. For example, what is it, phishing emails, uh, mm -hmm. how to recognize uh, uh, malicious links uh, in the email, and so on. Uh, that's why uh, I would say that uh, you cannot provide a secure solution if uh, your employees, they are not trained on cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Uh, then communication, of course, uh, when it's clear and concise, uh, it actually helps uh, your organization to build a culture of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Processes uh, uh, which are um, actively applied, they are becoming as important as technologies uh, in protecting organization. And of course, technology have to be tested, uh, also improved to fight with this sophisticated uh, increasing number of uh, cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the holistic approach, and, and you'll have, probably have to remind me of the four again, but uh, there's people, communications. And processes and technology. Okay, so all of these combined give you the best chance to have something that not only works today, but will continue to work uh, and and be maintained and give you this, this, uh, this cybersecurity delivery as expected. Exactly, for your organization, this for key factors. Yeah, perfect. And I guess this this links a little bit back to one of the 
the first uh, buzzword that we talked about it's defense in depth you know this is training your people physical mm -hmm. access control all exactly. of these different things combined um, you need to work together because uh, training your people but they're not communicating some of the things that you find is a breakdown in that process which which means that you have a failure at some point exactly. okay. perfect thank you uh, now the next two uh, are relatively similar, but I guess it's important that we differentiate between the two. There's cybersecurity by design and there's cybersecurity by default. So let's start with cybersecurity by design. Okay, so this is a very common term in product security. Uh, it means that, uh, for example, manufacturers, they include in cybersecurity in the initial design of the mm -hmm. products. Uh, cybersecurity by default, another term which you mentioned, is actually uh, when, uh, for example, you already develop a product and then uh, you want to release it uh, for customers to use, yes. Mm -hmm. So cybersecurity by default, it means that uh, you actually uh, remove all insecure features uh, in your product. Okay. Uh, so you make like a product secure by default. For example, let's say port 80 uh, have to be closed because it's insecure. Mm -hmm. So if port 80 is closed on the product, it means that uh, it's secure by, uh, by, default. by default. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of other examples can be provided. Okay. So, so secure or cyber secure by design is, as you mentioned, during the, the, the design process, the research and development process, yes. you've always got cyber security as part of the workflow to make exactly. sure the decisions you make along that yes. development process um, will deliver a product that, that has the right capabilities at mm -hmm. the end. Um, and then cyber security by default is if you take that product and plug it in, Yes. The standard settings, the, the you know the, the default settings within the system, are the most secure that that product is capable of doing. And and I like exactly. the example you use. You, know, you plug it in. Uh, you know, port eighty is is disabled. Yes. You could as a as an engineer make changes to those if you exactly. wanted to, but the the standard default system settings would give you the most secure system settings that that are possible as an example. Yes, yes. Exactly. Perfect. I like that. I think, and they're also very different. So, but they sound, they sound or look a little bit similar. So I think they're a good one to, to, to differentiate from. Uh, the next one, zero trust. What is zero trust? Oh, zero trust is very new uh, term in our industry in operational okay. technology, but it's uh, already exists in IT, mm -hmm. I would say. And uh, zero trust, it's uh, when um, uh, there is a, believe that organization, uh, they shouldn't trust anything inside or outside of its perimeter. Uh, they, like organization, should verify everything which try to access. Uh, and um, of course, uh, I would say it's very different from traditional approach, which we all used to nowadays. Uh, so in traditional approach, uh, if there is something in corporate uh, network, inside of corporate network, it's already by default, it's trusted. Mm -hmm. uh, but zero trust, it's like really, uh, you don't trust anything and you verify everything before, uh, before release access. Okay. So you, you authenticate every device, every user, every communication, mm -hmm. uh, every piece of information that's passed, all needs to be authenticated, whether it comes from the yes. device next door, which sits in your system, which is in your building, exactly. uh, or it, it comes from outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, why we are changing this from traditional approach to zero trust is because, uh, for example, in corporate network, you can find right now a lot of IoT devices, mm -hmm. like uh, also cloud connection. And this is uh, somehow breaks the paradigm, you know, as it was before corporate network was separated from uh, uh, for example, operational technology and so on. Mm. But right now, we really need to improve security. That's why we are saying that zero trust it um, will be our uh, future technology. Mm. Okay, so so the advent of some of these new technologies you mentioned, IoT, there, cloud connectivity, mm -hmm. device connectivity, uh, all of these things enable some great features and functionalities. But mm -hmm. they are all connections outside that corporate network. Exactly. Which means that they're, you know, we either start to look at every single one of those connections and ensure that they're secure, or we take a zero trust approach, exactly. which means 
no one is trusted. Everyone needs to be authenticated and everyone yep. needs to be tested before communication can, can ensue. It's okay, yes. Beautiful. I like it. Thank you. Um, the next one is threat and risk assessment. What do we mean when we talk about threat and risk assessment? Uh, so, threat and risk assessment, um, it's a very good term and it's applied every time when uh, you are dealing with the products. Mm -hmm. uh, during the whole uh, product life cycle, you need to <clears throat> manufacture they are doing this product or oh, threat and risk assessment to verify if there is, uh, for example, potential risks uh, inside of the product uh, or develop like features, uh, functionality of this product and also to fix these potential risks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I would say that uh, this threat and risk assessment, it started really from initial design of the product and also uh, repeats uh, from like during the whole life cycle. Uh, for example, if you have a significant change of your product, uh, then you need to, to do a threat risk assessment again. Thank you. So, start of the part of the standard operating procedure do an, do an assessment, go through the process to understand mm -hmm. where the risks live, and then whenever there's serious updates or significant updates to mm -hmm. the product or portfolio or, or software or whatever it might be, go through that process again. Exactly, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, the next is pen testing. Now, I'd be interested in, you know, pen testing is a shortened phrase. What does pen testing stand for? And then, and then what do we talk about that? So pen testing, it's penetration testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's done uh, usually by third-party organizations who is very professional in this pen testing for th what they are doing. Mm -hmm. So th it's actually the idea is to break a system to make it more secure. Okay. Yep. Uh, and if it's, for example, threat and risk assessment is done by manufacturer, for pen testing it's better to involve a really um, third-party organization who is specialized in this. Mm -hmm and can find uh, those uh, risks uh, which is not uh, for example uh, couldn't find uh, companies okay okay so it's 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 a process of getting a product or a solution mm -hmm. or a system or whatever it might be and trying to break in trying to break exactly. it yes. trying to to circumvent the security uh, yes. features and by doing that identifying potential weaknesses so they can be fixed and and updated or whatever it might be yeah very true <laughs> Perfect. I like it. Uh, the next one is security patch. I guess if you did a pen test, after you've done a threat and risk assessment and then you've gone through <laughs> the pen testing process, maybe you find an issue uh, and you get to a security patch. What do we mean when we talk about security patch? So it's a security fix. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you're right. After, for example, we are done with the pen testing, uh, uh, or um, some organizations are uh, reaching us uh, regarding vulnerability, uh, then uh, uh, next step is uh, to release a patch uh, to remove this vulnerability in the product. Mm -hmm. So you can remove like known and uh, new vulnerabilities uh, to be able to improve the whole protection level of the product. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, when we find a problem, a way to fix it. So exactly, yes. whether it's software or, or firmware or whatever it might be to, to, to close that door, to, to bridge the gap. Yes. Perfect. Um, I like that the, all of these have been in a little bit of a, 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 an order, which is nice. The next one <laughs> is incident handling process. How does that fit together with some of the previous buzzwords? Okay. In incident handling, you actually have a notification of the incident. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, customers, they can reach uh, to manufacturers and say that, uh, okay, we think that there is a vulnerability, you know, or incident in the product. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, security research researchers, they can find something uh, sensitive. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after manufacturers, they receive this notification, they, of course, analyze it with security experts involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, um, they are... Uh, Again, they are um, producing these fixes, uh, security patches, uh, uh, so it's uh, called mitigation, mitigation, and uh, of course, uh, you need uh, to have a disclosure. So you need uh, to uh, manufacturers, uh, they are oblique, oblique uh, to notify other customers mm -hmm. of their potential uh, incident, vulnerability, and also provide a fix, which is patch. 
Okay. And I guess this fits nicely into that communication box from the holistic uh-huh. approach. Yeah, when, exactly. When, there, exactly. when there's an issue, uh, you, you react to that issue, you fix it with the patch, but you also have to tell all the people out there that may yeah. use a product or work with the product that there is a patch mm-hmm. that they should do, um, how urgent it is, what the exactly. risks it would bring with it, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, so you see, like, uh, there is a really high dependence on people, technology, communication, processes. I like to it. To keep it all secure. <laughs> it's all tying together nicely. It works well. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, now, the next three, uh, yeah, we dive into a little bit of industry standards and things like this. So, um, let's start with the first one, IEC 62443. What is IEC 62443? Yeah, this is a very important buzzword. You mm-hmm. will maybe hear it uh, everywhere from every corner. <laughs> for, so this is uh, a series of the standard, mm-hmm. which is specifically for industrial control systems, uh, for our building automation controls. And uh, there are kind of different sections of this standard. Mm-hmm. So, for example, section uh, 2 Sorry, 4-2, it provides the requirements uh, for security of the product. Mm-hmm. So manufacturers, they are using it uh, in their uh, daily like deployment, uh, developing of the product uh, based on these requirements. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, for example, section 3-3 is speaking about uh, how to secure actually the whole system, what kind mm-hmm. of requirements you need to fulfill. Uh, and uh, based on this standard, there is a different uh, certification available. So manufacturers, they uh, actually uh, certify their products based on this standard because uh, how you can uh, show uh, security, mm-hmm. of course, uh, by using certification yep. of security. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so this one, uh, it's, uh, I would say, um, it's uh, this uh, standard is used uh, mainly uh, in Europe Union mm-hmm. and also Asia, mm-hmm. but for example for US there is another standard which is the UL twenty nine hundred, mm-hmm. and uh, it's more popular okay. in US. Okay, and and is it safe or, or maybe the question is, uh, are there really significant differences between uh, between the US and and the IEC standard, or are they mm-hmm. built on some similar base uh, assumptions? Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. They are built on a similar uh, concept, okay. uh, maybe a bit uh, different there is, uh, mm-hmm. based on the market, of course. Yep. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, the concept of cybersecurity of product system is similar. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that that's an, a really important mm-hmm. one, as you mentioned, because uh, as you say, how do you measure cybersecurity? You mm-hmm. need something to measure exactly. against. Right? Yes. So you need, yes. a, you need a, a standard Approved. and you need the certification to approve uh, com- compared to how you do that. So that's an important one, uh, especially for those out there listening that may, you know, we may be comparing a product or, or may uh, be looking or, or you know, they want to have a better understanding about the approach mm-hmm. that's been taken. Those mm-hmm. standards are a good thing to compare consistently across different systems and whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for, for example, people like customers uh, mm-hmm. uh, who really want to know uh, is uh, like this product secure, uh, they really need to look on the security level mm-hmm. in this certification because there is, for example, security level one, mm-hmm. which actually protection against uh, like unintended misuse or just errors. and. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have a very high level of security, I would say. Security level two already, uh, if you see it uh, in uh, the product, uh, it means that this product can be used uh, against uh, uh, intentional misuse. So for example, this is uh, um, low knowledge of the system and also uh, low level of motivation of the hacker. Mm -hmm. But if you see, for example, security level three, it means that it's already this product can be used uh, and it's secure against uh, sophisticated attacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last uh, level, it's uh, security level four. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say this level is, uh, there are a lot of requirements to fulfill Mm -hmm. Because uh, this kind of products uh, with security level four, they can be actually installed in military, for example, projects or government. So they have really, really very high security level. 
Okay, perfect. No, that's a great addition because, mm-hmm. you know, that certification, it's nice that uh, the higher the number, the higher the security, that exactly. makes it a little bit easier, but yep. uh, but also to understand, you know, the highest level at level four, you know, this is where you really start to look at the application mm-hmm. requirements. Um, exactly. But uh, two and three are kind of what you would expect without there if you were trying to trying to have a secure system in, in a space where perhaps there is a risk. Exactly. All right, perfect. Thank you. Uh, now, the next one, we have another standard here, uh, ISO 27001 or ISO 27001. What mm-hmm. is this? Uh, so, this is uh, also a standard, uh, but uh, this standard you cannot apply for industrial control systems. Okay. It's more applicable for IT, IT mm-hmm. systems, uh, and uh, for example, cloud also. Cloud applications you can certify by this uh, standard, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, it's not about hardware. It's uh, I, I would say the standard it's more about software, software okay. security. Okay, so it has a similar approach, has a similar mm-hmm. uh, function within the industry of of, of setting a, a measurement and expectation. Uh, that can then be certified against, but it's focused on those software cloud applications exactly. rather than than hardware. Perfect. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Thank you. Now, the next one I have is, uh, I'm also interested to, to understand better, um, OWASP. Um, I'm not sure if how, how you would normally refer to this. Uh, OWASP. OWASP. All right. Yes. Perfect. Let's do this. What, what is OWASP? So OWASP, uh, um, you will hear a lot if you are, for example, doing uh, uh, stuff with the cloud applications. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, OWASP is an online organization mm-hmm. uh, which uh, produces uh, best practices, norms, how to secure cloud applications, how to secure job applications. It's uh, like very well known in this cloud community, mm-hmm. I would say. And you can also, for example, do pen tests. Uh, of cloud application based on OWASP uh, principles. Okay. Yep. So this is more, okay. uh, as you can see, like uh, IEC 62443, it's more about hardware if mm-hmm. you want to secure uh, secure hardware and uh, make a certification mm-hmm. for the hardware. And um, then uh, another one, it's uh, ISO 27001, if mm-hmm. you are dealing with IT uh, security, mm-hmm. IT system, and almost it's about cloud. Okay, beautiful. So these three together, when we look at our industry, and, and you know, if you look at the, maybe a traditional view on, on a building automation system, as an example, an operational technology where you have you know, your hardware layers, your system and, and your, your field layers, uh, your software layer and now the cloud layer becomes more and more important. These are the three standards that cover these three exactly. segments of, of the hardware, the software and the systems that we talk about in this industry. Yes, and uh, also variations possible uh, based on the market which you are okay. dealing with. Like is it US, is it Asia, you know. Yeah, and, and maybe there's a good time as always to comment when we talk about cybersecurity, you know, the there are, are very, very often um, you know, local regulations mm-hmm. on exactly. top of international regulations. There's expectations for manufacturers globally, but also locally for yes. installers, for for people who are you know owners and operators who are responsible mm-hmm. for the system. So it's always worthwhile noting and always be sure to say to check what is your local requirements. Exactly. What are your responsibilities within that requirement, depending on where you sit within the value chain, let's call it, depending on what your role is in a particular project? Uh, always double check because they could be different, they could change, they could be updated. Uh, it's a it's a constantly changing landscape. You know, whenever we talk about cybersecurity, we talk about there is no such thing as a as a silver bullet. Uh, mm-hmm. What is secure today uh, may need an update yes. tomorrow to remain secure. So a, a, a big uh, a, a big uh, hand up for everyone that's listening to make sure you know um, what you need to adhere to, what your responsibility is, and and what the process should and could be for you to remain secure, or be secure today, but remain secure into the future as well. Alina, very thank well you. said, John. Thank you. <laughs> you see, I, I learned from the best. This is the this is the thing. I, I, I can. And always bring it back. Um, Alina, thank you so much. We just ran through 15, I think, 15 buzzwords. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, 
I can imagine that there are more for us to talk about, so I'm sure we'll see another cybersecurity buzzword session at some point. Um, for anyone who is out listening out there, of course, always share, like, uh, and comment. And please, on this episode, comment for, for some of uh, the other buzzwords that you're interested in, whether you, you found this via LinkedIn or other social media or you found this uh, in some, uh, one of your blog posts or something like this. Come and find us, make contact and let us know what are the other buzzwords you hear out there that, uh, that you want to hear a definition for or want to learn a little bit more about. And uh, I, will, I will secure some time with Alina and we can, we can have a bit of a chat about those as well. Uh, Alina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, John. I had a great pleasure to speak with you again and record this uh, buzzword buster. <laughs> and looking well, forward for other buzzwords I'm really interested in. <laughs> I, I'm excited as well. And, you know, welcome to the buzzword buster, you know, mm -hmm. uh, fraternity. Um, mm -hmm. you know, this, uh, I'm sure that we'll be back here again. So thank you. Uh, and again, thank you to everyone listening. Like, share, comment, subscribe to us. Uh, check out some of the previous conversations I've had with Alina around BACnet Secure Connect uh, and other cybersecurity topics there will be more absolutely uh, as long as she continues to say yes we will continue to record uh, and otherwise uh, you know feel free to reach out to us if you have any thoughts or suggestions and we'll go from there but until the next time thank you and we'll talk to you soon bye bye <laughs>